Okay, and now what I'm going to do is give you one more uh, technical detail on how to improve your Bedini motors or EV gray type, however you want to do it. Uh, this is, so let's turn it sideways. This is a, here's your magnet in here, and this is a typical core. This is a very thin core. This is about one-eighth of an inch and um, wrapped in, in the, your, here's your coil wire over here. Now, what I wanted to show is that when you look at a typical circular core, and it's actually more efficient to follow the field lines. And so you want to, you're going to end up bringing in sort of a crescent shape that's a, a toroidal form, a U-core, just like the axis of this generator. But you're going to start out small, and then it's going to thicken up. As you get to the middle point here where the flux is maximum, you're going to have, that's where you're going to have your most windings. And then you bring it down to a smaller type. So this is a much more complicated wind. It's very difficult to do mechanically and so it's something you wind by hand uh, initially and that will preserve a lot of your energy and then uh, maximum energy per unit weight um, and then here's just an idea of how to again do the tesla type pancake coil wrappings uh, while you're doing it now here i had uh moo which your um uh, i forgot what that was and my memory's kind of bad sometimes uh, and this is 8,500 turns, amps, uh, no, I don't even Okay, one more. I'm going to have to make it quick because my battery's running low. And uh, here's a typical, this would be a, a much more improved version of that ceiling fan unit uh, where you have your coil layout like I was showing you and uh, a better type disc assembly. And uh, let's see, it's... Take a look at some other stuff here. Now, a couple of things you, you'll need to go over are, you know, basic physics, uh, torque, mass, inertia, type calculations, rotational dynamics, uh, you know, angular acceleration of your your rotor disc. So you want to study those equations and things like that. But I wanted to show you some basic calculations on um, one. I haven't built this one, so these are all theoretical for an improved version of that ceiling fan type setup. Uh, using Faraday's law as the basis, so you have this one here focuses on 2387 Gauss magnets. Um, that's 0.2 Tesla. Uh, let's see. And your pull force is 59 pounds on that type of magnet. Now your magnetic flux area uh, was uh, 0.06 inches in diameter square meters there. Now this focuses on the target RPM of 12,000 RPM and 200 hertz. Um, but that's just the, this is a, a goofy setup on the spreadsheet, but pay no attention to that. Uh, 16 coils, 16 magnets. Your hertz is going to be uh, 3,200 per magnet running through there. So your change in time per mag is that very small number. Um, now, when you're actually working the formulas and crunching them in the spreadsheet, uh, your voltage is a function of the coil turns, you know, your number of uh, coil turns for your target voltage. you got to do amps, coil length. But the uh, target volts on this one was 120, number of turns, 3033, 3033 volts per coil, negative 4.6, never mind the negative, but 4.6 volts per coil for the whole array, 73.4 volts. Those are just your total number of turns. Uh, inductance amps. Your watts total would be about 45.9 watts per coil. Um, I'm sorry, 2.9 watts per coil, 45 watts on that one. And that was uh, on the pickup coils. Now, over here, you're, um, that's at 12,000 RPM. Oh, no, I'm on the wrong page. Okay, now another thing to consider is that when you're making a drive type coil, you'll use a bifiler winding that's usually circular wire, round wire. Um, when you're using just a straight pickup coil, magnetic, um, I'm sorry, uh, square wire is better. And uh, you'll find, cause, because with square wire you get a better uh, cross section and, and tight wrapping. Uh, you have less wasted space with square wire. And then another thing to consider is also the type of material you're using. Uh, aluminum wire is usually a lot better 
uh, for lightweight applications. And then you'll also want so you know there are different types of materials you can use for the wire. Uh, the gauge is something you want to pay attention to because that affects your number of windings that you can put in there. If you use a real uh, small wire, you'll have more more windings, but you won't be able to flow that many amps. Uh, you will be able to flow high voltage. Now, if you go with a lower, uh, if you go with a higher, I'm sorry, if you go with a, a wider wire, a wider diameter wire, you get more amps through it, but less winding. So um, what governs that is really your amp flow that you're going to run through the coil and what your what your selection of the, the fusing current limit per diameter. And so for that, you need to consult the chart. So one of the first places you start off in the design of coils for your system is determining your fusing current limit that you want in that coil. So you need to know how many amps that you want to flow through the system to get your target um, you know, wattage. So your volts and your amps will deter per coil at, at the desired RPM, at the design RPM that you want will give you your, your wattage target and at that at RPM. And so then you just have your your uh, your specs that you go there. You kind of have to, in designing things, you have to go uh, reverse order. So, you know, you fiddle around and you build some of your mock-ups and your, your prototype units. And then as you figure out where you want to go and what you want to target, then you, you work backwards and you go to, you know,